Oh, wow, that's crazy, bro. You had a pretty rough time of it, didn't you? But now that Peach is safe, I guess everything's okay. Really, though, how amazing is it that you saved the world again? Again, bro! And say, it's been a little while since then. Are you ready for a new adventure? Yeah, you the man, bro. I wonder what everyone who traveled with you is up to. Whoa, what was that, bro? Was that your newfangled mail gadget? Dear Mario, what's up? Gumbella here. I'm still here working with Professor Frankly. We beat the Shadow Queen, but there's tons of Rogue Port lore we still don't get. So, my research with the Professor goes on and on. With the info I gathered with you, we have lots of great leads now, though. Mario, like I always said, every myth contains a kernel of truth. Speaking of which, know what was in the chest that the professor recovered? You're totally not going to believe me when I tell you. It's a secret! Haha! <laughs> but I'll tell you next time I see you. Um, just going to tell you right now. It's a dried shroom. Yeah, that's all it was. A dried shroom. As part of my research, I did go back to many of the places we visited, and I saw everyone we traveled with, too. Koops is living peacefully in Petalburg with his dad and Koopy Koo. And Mario, guess what Koops wants us to do now? He wants to become mayor of Petalburg and live there in peace! Can you imagine? I know, a warlike guy like Koops. <laughs> Still, it might just be perfect for him, come to think of it. He's so much more of an adult now than when you left Rogueport. Still, I think Koopy Koo pretty much has him wrapped around her little finger. Flurry's back on stage in a big way. Yeah, <laughs> in a big way, yeah. <laughs> the crowds are totally ecstatic. And the play she's doing right now is a story of our adventure. Yeah, it's called Paper Mario. I saw it twice. It was totally the best play ever. And somehow, Duplis has joined the troop as an actor. Who saw that coming? His transformation skills are serving him well, but it still kind of creeps me out. I'm guessing those toads in the background are supposed to be posing as the audience. I only noticed them now. I also really like how Duplis becomes an actor of you. Oh, and little Trogdor? Yeah, he's fighting Solo in the Glitz Pit. He says he's getting pretty close to a title match, even. Isn't that just adorable? Yeah, nothing's as adorable like a title match. You must love Hulk Hogan. He's so cute. It's sort of silly, but kind of cute too, don't you think? Oh, and wait, I have to get this exactly right or he'll, like, get, like, so mad at me. He, uh, said that he could totally take you in the ring now, so bring it. I guess he doesn't change. Isn't that too cute? Vivian's gone back to hang out with her sisters. Family is important, after all. Now that the Shadow Queen has been defeated, I don't think Beldum's into evil. Oh, and Beldum also promised me she would never be mean to Vivian ever again. Yep, I think the Three Sirens are going to live pretty peacefully from now on. But you should totally go visit her sometime. I have nothing to say about that at all. Nothing. Bobberty goes out to see every day now with Cortez. I think his soul has healed. I ran into him on Keel Hall Key by accident the other day, which was nice. He was so happy, I thought he was going to blow up on me for a second there. You know, I bet Scarlet is looking down on him and smiling right now. Oh, and I almost forgot, everyone on Key Hall Key is well, and they say hello. Well, I only know, like, that one guy, I think his name's Papatch, that big babom. otherwise I don't know the others. Ms. Mouse is still running the bad shop in Rogueport, so she's happy. She comes over to Frankly sometimes to visit, but as usual, as soon as she sets foot outside of the shop, she turns into a badger ninja. She said just the other day that she found some super rare badge, actually. That's our globe-trotting, mystery-making, flirting little badge thief, huh? Oh, now it is! I didn't even recognize her for a moment there. Wish I could jump like that. I could become famous for jumping. They'd call me Jumpman. And yeah, they're alive too. In my travels, I heard a rumor that Lord Crump and Grotus were still both alive. 
I guess that makes them pretty tenacious baddies, doesn't it, Mario? No, it just makes them shittily written by people who don't let anyone die. Plus, I hear Grotus is just ahead, which really cuts down on mischief making. It really bothers me that every single character that was killed off is absolutely fine. Ugh, including... Yeah. Yeah, they even went here. They did this. Ugh, they like, un they did un they undid everything with story significance. Speaking of miracle survivals, guess whose favorite calculator is still computing? Dr. Computer is still computing! He says he really wants to see you in Peach again. Well, he's never gonna see me again, because as far as I can care, he'd stay there. Though I kind of wonder what would happen if you went back to see him with Peach. Well, guess we'll never find out, because I'm not doing it in this Let's Play. Well, I'm totally rambling at this point, so I guess I'd better wrap it up. I just want to say, even though things got tough, I'm grateful for our time together. And, there was one thing that kind of weighed on me and I never got to express to you. See, I... Well, maybe that's best kept a secret. I'm pregnant, and Kaiba's the father! So, please say hi to Peach for me, okay? Till we meet again, your friend, Goombella. Hey, that's awesome, bro. Sounds like everyone's doing great over there. Huh? Someone here? Excuse me, sirs. Hello, Mario. Hello, Luigi. Please allow me to apologize for coming unannounced, but I was cleaning out the storeroom in the castle the other day, and I found something rather amazing. Yes, Toadsworth found a treasure map, and I'm sure it will lead to real treasure this time. I just know it. So, Mario, you'd love to look for treasure, isn't that right? The boat's waiting for you. Oh, hell no. Not again. Well, Luigi, can't we switch places? No? No? Okay, 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 I see what it is. I see what it is. We have a post game, I see what it is. We have to go back to Rogueport. Okay, fine. Very, very well. I want to go back anyway. Yeah, totally on my own volition. You're a strange one, sir. It must be something special to convince you to return. Although, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. And I am never going back to the Mushroom Kingdom because I hate everyone there. Oh, hi, Goombilla. Long time no see, Mario. I'm totally glad I got to see you again. This is awesome. Everyone's ready. We heard you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you. So, are you ready to go? Wherever you want to go, we are so there with you. So, if it wasn't clear, I hate most things about that post-game cutscene where they're showing what happened with everyone. Except the fact that du that Duplis becomes an actor uh, who plays you. That's really cool. But the problem with it is, like, so much of it doesn't make sense. I mean, every single character that was, like, dead or killed off in the story for any, like, remotely significant reason is absolutely fine. But anyway, check this out. Super Luigi, all five volumes now on sale at Toad Bros Bazaar. The mustachioed Green Baron. That is so cool. Oh yeah, and the other problem with it is that they show you that treasure map at the end, and although they do send you back to Rogueport, they don't ever talk about the treasure map again. Well, hey, big brother. Fancy meeting you here. What the coinky dink? Eh? Who, me? Well, I was in the area, so I thought I'd drop by this inn. One thing led to another. I've been catching a breather here, you know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Want to hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Eh, uh, no. Luigi did have his own story. I might have mentioned this at some point or another. Um, anyway, they actually don't heal you after your fight with the Shadow Queen, so... I've came here to... You know... Heal my entire party. And get our all star power back. And... I cut ahead to the Pit of 100 Trials. That's right. That's the one thing we came back to do. Deepest um, levels reach 20, record power bouts 11. We only got 64 out of 100 star pieces, but I don't intend to find any more. This is the last thing I wanted to do, was actually go into the Pit of Under Trials and finish it. Since we've already been through the first 20 floors, I'm going to be cutting ahead through them. I'm also going to skip a lot of the random battles that appear on some of the earlier floors. Um, however, I'm not going to skip any of the item floors that appear every 10 floors. The item floors are where you find a room with a treasure chest, and inside that treasure chest you'll find a special item that you can only find in the Pit of Under Trials. A lot of them are like badges of some kind or another. 
These are the badges I've got for my initial jump into the pit. I've also got lots of great items like Jelly Ultras, which are, you go to Zest T and combine a Ultra Shroom with a Jam and Jelly to get a Jelly Ultra, and I have like five of those. So we're pretty set for this dungeon. Um, it's not going to be hard. Not with the setup we've got. It's not going to be as nearly as hard as it would be otherwise. So let's jump right in. And I'm actually not going to cut ahead because something special happens in the very first battle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see, just to... Yeah, if there's any unique battle that happens in an early floor, I'll show it. Aha, here it is. Um, this Gloomba, fortunately, didn't die with that, like, massive attack that we launched on it. So I'm going to use Miss Mao's uh, Kiss Thief. Might be the only time we end up using it. It's a pretty tough move to time, but if you nail it, then... We are able to steal a badge, HP plus P. Pretty neat. Don't know if we're going to use it, but at least we have it. And there. That was a rather unique circumstance. Occasionally enemies do hold items, and now, with Miss Mouse, you can snag them off them. Very good. Very helpful. However, I think it only works on the first enemy in a row. Or rather, you need to clear out all the enemies in your way before you can use it. So, I think this is floor 20 right here. And, nah, that was probably floor 10. This might be floor 20. Yeah, this was floor, this is floor 20. We already got to both floor 10 and floor 20. Anyway, on this floor, we run into a mover, luckily. So this is guy is going to help us skip a few coin, skip a few floors. I recommend you always choose the down five levels, but check the um, thing on the back wall every time. That'll show you the uh, floor number, because you don't want to miss every 10th floor. Like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You do not want to miss those. If you miss those, you'll miss incredible items. So just be careful about skipping too far ahead with the mover. In our case, we could afford to jump ahead without really worrying. So now that we're in the uh, 20 through 30 floors, like the floors numbered 21, 22, 23, up through 29 and 30, we've got some new enemies that we didn't find the last time we were here in the pit. The deeper you go, it's kind of like the Savage Labyrinth in Wind Waker. You'll find like different enemy types from the chapters you were in before, the areas you visited, and the further you go, the further the area will be. That's basically how this place works. So I think right now we're fighting enemies that are around, like, the kind that we would have fought back in the Glitz Pit chapter, so nothing that bad. Still, they're enemy varieties we haven't encountered for a while, so I figured I might as well show you what they are, what they're capable of. They have these annoying babons. Um, they're quite irritating. The Lakitu's. Don't give Lakitu's a chance to throw their shells, those spinies, because spinies are honestly a pain to get rid of. Fortunately, it looks like the way we have this set up. Oh wait, we might not be able to beat this guy with one hit. No, he's probably going to have to get his chance to attack us. Ugh. That could have gone better, but whatever. Yeah, he died anyway. Moving on. So we skipped almost all of the floors numbered 20 through 30. We really weren't missing much, though. There's nothing that special in there. My advice is just to use Sweet Treat to heal yourself peri uh, periodically, and keep up your star power by doing stylish moves. Zap Tap. This is a reward you get for going through. And some people might recommend that you come here down to floor 30 much earlier, because Zap Tap is immensely useful as a badge. Just makes you, like, always electrified, I'm pretty sure, so that any enemy that does a direct attack to you takes a little bit of damage in return. It also stops them from being combo hits to you, because after the first hit, they'll retreat. Um, they'll, like, draw back after being hit. Now we're going through floors 30 through 40, so we're going to have some slightly more advanced enemies. I think around the level that you'd expect to find them in, like, Twilight Town, like the creepy steeple chapter with Lucas. Sounds about right. Maybe something like that. It's, it's kind of hard to pin down, but that's my guess. So Dark Koopas really aren't much of a challenge. I think they're just basically Koopas with slightly raised stats and nothing else too difficult or noteworthy about them. But whenever a new enemy appears, I try to show it to you. This is a kind of a familiar enemy. Um, let's see if I recognize this guy. I think he is a moon cleft, perhaps. No, he's a twilight cleft. They're even weaker. The ones, they're like, um, yeah, these are clefts that we fought back in Twilight Town. Um, also, we have Spike Shield on, which lets us jump on spiked enemies. Very useful. I've just used it for these early floors, because there's plenty of spiny enemies that just, like, they're easily finished off if you can jump on them, and so I've just chosen to be able to jump on them. Also, this new blue Koopa, or whatever it is, actually is able to do a big attack to both of you when, while it's flipped upside down, so 
kind of a tricky little move there. Not something I ex I'd expect like the first time through, but I figured I should show it off to you. Um, you want to watch out for those blue Koopas. And make sure that you don't flip them. They're much more dangerous when they're flipped. <laughs> or if you do flip them, make sure you got them in a position where you can damage them enough to finish them off in one turn before they can do that attack. So here you see me um, getting back the HP and FP that I lost with a simple Sweet Treat. No need to go all out with the Sweet Feast, the Sweet Treat will do it. And don't use too much like star power, just conserve the star power for the Sweet Treat. Um, it's pretty repetitive because it's a move you have to use a lot while you're going through the pit, but trust me, it's worth your while. That's the basic deal. And that's all there really is to talk about on floors 30 through 40, nothing really important there. The reward we get is Pity Flower, whenever we take damage, um, you recover 1 FP. Could be kind of interesting, kind of useful, but... Uh, not particularly. And there weren't really many interesting battles in Forest 40 through 50. There are kind of just enemies we've seen before. And shitty palette swaps. Strange Sack lets you carry up to 20 items, though. Very worth it to come and get this earlier if you want. Um, level 50. We're going to get into some harder fights next episode in the Pit of 100 Trials. So, I'll be seeing you then.